Let's start this meeting. Hi, everybody. So welcome to this new Jenkins Infra meeting. Um, uh, basically, um, the main topic will be to discuss about the automated Jenkins um, releases, how we can automate this. We were blocked because we were missing um, a code signing certificate, which has been provided by the CDF last week. So we are now looking at what, what are the next steps, basically. So um, we started a new document that contains all the notes related to this. The, the, the document is um, not public to everyone, um, but um, it's more like if you're interested to participate, just send a message and you will be uh, added to the document. The main, the main reason why I don't want to be public by default is because I, would, I want to be able to discuss about um, security or private stuff, or whatever um, related to this project. But after once the once the automated release is shipped, um, that document can come back um, uh, public. Um, so, but yeah, if you are interested to participate, feel free to ask um, the permission. So um, I can just share the. Um, we we'll just share this document for now. Is automation. Can you see my screen? Yes. Core release automation discussion. So the idea here is just to list all the missing steps that we need before going live. Um, so the first thing I just did a few reminders about the different repository that we have here. So the first one is Docker and dash packaging, um, which contain the Docker image used to run all the scripts. Um, mainly the packaging scripts. It's a quite big image. The second repository is Jenkins CI's packaging, which is an, the, um, the, the repository that contains all the script to build Debian, Red Hat, Suze, and, um, and Windows um, package. We have Jenkins Infra release that contains the, the, the bash script used to release, that contains the Jenkins file used to trigger job uh, release to trigger packaging. Uh, the pod templates definition that we use to um, to run everything on on Kubernetes. That's the the biggest part here. Then we have Jenkins in flash slash chart secrets. Those this is um, a private repository that contain encrypt, encrypted secrets um, used in the release environment. Um, all the secrets are not defined there. Um, we try to split the secret in multiple locations. Some are in that repository, other are hosted on the Azure uh, key vaults. And finally, we have the Jenkins Infra slash charts that contains the, um, the definition to, 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 to deploy the, the release environment and all services related to the release environment. So if you have some time, if you are interested by a specific uh, part of this project, feel free to just look at this, uh, one of those repository, verify, review those, um, be sure that um, everything is fine. And if you have any suggestions, uh, feel free to document those suggestions here so we can discuss. Um, the idea is I just, we started listing a few um, to-dos, uh, things that you have to do. Um, either those are minor bugs that you have to, to fix. Um, the, the, main, the, main, the main thing that you have to do now is that we were using um, certificates like self-signed certificates, um, temporary GPG key and, and, and stuff like this. And now we have to switch to um, the official ones. So I updated the, 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 certificate, the code signing certificate to use the, the real one. Um, I generate an official GPG key. Um, and so now we are um, running the, the release process and the packaging process um, in order to be as close as possible as what it will look like um, once we are going into production. So now, depending on the output on the different people who will review the, this project, um, we will be able to go um, either at the end of the week or in two weeks, whatever. Um, we still have to, we still have, I mean, we still have a lot of uncertainties um, before going to prediction. Um, do you have any questions so far from here? Nope, so I can continue. Um, so as I was saying, the idea here now is more to identify what the first release um, will looks like. And so there is a file called, um, I think it's a from, um, release 
So we have right now, so the release are defined in a directory called profile.d and inside we have three different releases right now. Um, right now I'm focusing on experimental, um, but once the experimental release is validated, we can move forward. The, the file is the same for the two other releases. So the most important settings that we have here is the Git repository that we are using to build uh, um, a release. So right now I'm using my fork. Um, but we can, I mean, the, the, just an example. Um, the GPG key that we are using, uh, the Maven repository where we are pushing the artifacts. Um, and finally, the release line. So the release line is the name of the release. So right now, we only have a stable and weekly releases. So in this case, I'm just creating a release line dash, uh, called experimental. So we can officially push, um, for example, on package or Jenkins or Tayo to validate that everything is working fine. So once, once we are um, ready to move uh, to go into production, we just have to be sure that the, um, the user and we have the right um, settings defined here and the user use for releasing have the right permission. Um, but yeah, right now we are still doing some tests. Um, the release environment looks like, so the, the service is only available from the VPN. So right now it only have it only has two, two jobs. Um, one to, to trigger release, a second one to trigger packaging. So the, the releasing job is now working. Um, where is this? So it's now working and it's using the, the official code signing certificates and it's also using a real GPG key. So we can test artifacts. So if you want to have a look, um, so basically this instance is, is only available from the VPN, but then it's public to everybody who is in the VPN. So Right now, we decided to go as open as possible. If for some reason we realize that we that um, that that instance can be at risk, we can be more um, we can I mean put it in a more secure place. But for now, we want it to be as um, we want to be sure that people can look at um, the build outputs. So, um, if you want to trigger a new release, um, it's as simple as this. You just um, where is this? You just uh, run a build and there is a parameter um, and the parameter will ask you which release you want to, to run. Um, is it experimental? Right now I only enable experimental to be sure that we do not conflict with the stable or the weekly, but once we are ready, we can just um, um, just add those parameters for the stable and, and the weekly. And regarding the packaging, um, Regarding the packaging job right now, um, I'm having some issues with the GPG key. So basically, uh, I was using the default GPG key provided with the script. Um, and now that I define a different GPG key, um, I'm, I'm having some um, issues that I'm currently fixing to, to be sure that we are using the right GPG key. Um, but the, 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 um, the job looked like this right now. So it's loading. So basically, what are the, the different missing steps here? So as you can see, the builds are broken right now. So this issue is related to the, um, to the GPG key. So we are using the wrong GPG key. Um, the next step would be about that we will be sure that will be the next step. Um, I will have to be sure that we are publishing to the right location. So. Um, Something that I, that I started working um, while we did not have the code signing certificate was to redesign a package of Jenkins.io so we could split the different services into different locations on Azure. Um, I did not have the time to finish that work. So basically what I'm going to do is just um, change the, the, the publishing script. So we just um, copy all the file to uh, package of Jenkins.io and um, we can move forward. So. I wasn't able to do all the work that I wanted to do um, you know, before going live. So now we are just uh, looking at different shortcuts and seeing what's, what really need to be done now and what can be delayed for uh, next um, uh, steps. Is there any question regarding the automated release for now? I like we can't hear you. Uh, sorry, no, it's fine. So we uh, have some action items uh, on our side to proceed. 
Uh, so both me and Mark will be spending some time to help. Uh, but yeah, I guess that uh, any external contributions would be great, especially validating the beats once they are available, providing feedback because yeah, all the flow is open source. So any audit, any uh, comments would be much appreciated. So yeah, as um, so while, while right now we are really in a in a in a, um, in a moment where we try to to audit and test that everything is working fine. And so, yeah, if you have any experience with Kubernetes or Java, whatever, uh, that's probably one of the good time to, to jump in. Um, another thing that I really want to identify and be sure that um, everything is aware is that I want to be sure that at least two, piece of, two person knows and really understand the different parts of this project. So either from the infrastructure parts, either from the environment, the services, the process or, or whatever. And we also have, need to be sure that um, several people can change a password or understand how the credentials are working. So um, if you have any questions, concerns, whatever, that's really the right time to, to ask. And so we will be able to address this. Um, yeah, the, this is this is currently my priority. Uh, I would like to to finish um, this work as soon as possible. So, yeah, this is my focus for the coming days. So, if there is no other questions, I propose to move on the two different two other topics um, that I put to the agenda. So there is one regarding Rackspace. Um, so you may saw the message on the mailing list. So Rackspace was a sponsor of the Jenkins project for the last um, 10 years, something like that, something like that. And in December, in November, they announced that they stopped the, um, the sponsoring open source projects. And they came back uh, to us last week uh, proposing uh, a new sponsoring um, um, a new sponsoring um, project. So the idea would be to um, to not be sponsored by Rackspace, but be sponsored by SpinUp, which is um, a different uh, interface of the Rackspace. Um, but we have to we we, yeah, we still have to to see what would be the, the condition. But basically, they would provide some compute for the, the coming years. This would allow us to not work on archives at jenkinsia.org and yeah, it would help us to save some bugs. So it's this way, I mean, this more than welcome at the moment. Um, and we don't have to do anything else than that. So this we agreed. And regarding CI, um, regarding CI.jenkins.io, we are still in the process to, so we are now using. Um, Amazon for EC2 for Linux machines and for Windows machines. So we're using the EC2 plugin. We are having a really weird bug at the moment. Um, for some reason, the the machine stopped working after a while, and so we just have to relaunch the agent. The machine is working fine. Um, no this space issue. I mean, the, the machine is really, I mean, really totally totally correct. So. It's just that they are disconnected afterwards. So we have to, yeah, we, we also have to work on this to understand what's happening in our case. Um, it may be related to the to some latency issues between Amazon and Azure. Um, but yeah, that, that's definitely a weird issue. And with the automated project, it's kind of difficult. So if you have an ex experience um, using Amazon and Azure together, um, you're also more than welcome to help. But uh, yeah, we are facing some bandwidth issues right now on the different projects. So that's that's pretty old. So for the for this for the past week. Any question? No, so I'm I'm assuming I'm going to continue trying to investigate those EC2 agents being unreliable after I get my my initial checks done on the current prototype builds or the release automation outputs. I'm going to try to write some tests to assert that those signing setups are correct, watch the tests fail with the current build outputs. So, so those are, those are on my plate and I'll keep watching those EC2 instances and restarting them during my hours. Okay. Or reconnecting them. They're not even restarting it. And no. Olivier, am I, I think I understand that those EC2 instances are sometimes actually recycled, that they are destroyed and then recreated as, as machines that they periodically, 
go away and come a new machine comes online? So, so basically, the, the, the plugin is configured to request, um, the machine is configured to request um, a new instance when it's needed. And what's happening here is that, um, so the machine is correctly provisioned, it's correctly attached to the master, it's correctly used, and after a while, the machine is disconnected. So the machine is still there, it's still running on Amazon, and um, it's not even not deleted. So sometimes the machine are just running for hours. Um, and then reuse and some. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, I configure a timeout to delete the machine after a while. But last time I checked, it was not working. Um, but okay, yeah, so, I, I have. So they're, it's not, they're it's not, not any more fresh. Yeah, it's not any more fresh in my head. So no problem. Thank you. I can I can read the configuration and, and look at it myself. So that's not yeah. an issue. Thanks. You, you, you should you you should yeah you should have access to the to the Amazon account now. I do. So one thing to keep in mind uh, that uh, we basically have no single shot agents and currently with Cloud API for EC2, you cannot configure them because EC2 implements Cloud API without hugs and uh, there is basically no way to do that. So you say we have no single shot agents. That's what I think I heard you say. Uh, for EC2, no. Okay, great. So Thank you. Agents uh, might be recycled. Yeah. Okay. And Even if you set one executor and uh, shut it down, down there right after the okay. completion. Okay. That's and, and that's and that that is different than what we have with the ACI agents there, right? Because if I understand correctly, the ACI agents that are running on Azure are single shot. They are single use. Is so that correct? The, AC, the ACI are containers basically. So ACI are just a container where um, so. Uh, right now, the, the the account was configured to use Azure Virtual Machine, which is um, the equivalent to EC2 instances on Amazon. And we are using ACI um, on Azure, and the idea would be to either move on Kubernetes or maybe use um, um, right. uh, the Great. Amazon alternative of ACI. Um, just, yeah. Super. Just, Thank you. Thanks for the clarity, Oleg. Like, and, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the... the and I was relying on the EC2 instances being reused. That I, I, my mental model is that they are static agents for the, at least the, the lifetime of the virtual machine. I just see sometimes the count of machines connected is less than at other times. And I had assumed that was the, they're, they're, that was the EC2 after, plugin so destroying and recreating. Yeah, the, the EC2 plugin destroy instances when you don't need them anymore. Got it. Thank you. Okay. The only thing, the only thing that I notice is that um, if the if the agent is attached to the master, it's used, and then either the agent becomes in a disconnected mode, and then the agent is not cleaned up, cleaned up after a while, or it just um, idle, just uh, nothing uh, has nothing to do, and then the E2 plugins correctly delete the agent. So that's why sometimes you see five, six, ten uh, mm -hmm. machines. Um, another thing that I also did was to reduce the number of Azure instances that you can deploy. Um, um, the main reason to this is to mainly to better control uh, our costs on the Azure accounts. Thank you. Thanks very much. But yeah. Otherwise, if you don't have any other questions, I propose to stop the meeting here. We don't have to hold this meeting for 30 minutes if we don't have to. Yeah, one question uh, is about security audit. So Mark had to drop. Okay. Uh, but he might need some uh, guidelines and some access to do that. Okay. So if uh, you could summarize uh, what exactly needs to be explored and okay. how to access or reprovision this data. Okay. It uh, would be great. Um, I'll contact him and I'll discuss with him how we can help and what kind of access he needs. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.